On this chapter, we will do a quick review of the basic cell structures and their functions. We will focus on characteristics shared by all cells, while specialized cells will be addressed later in your studies. Remember, there are over 200 different types of cells, so we cannot cover them all, but we will focus on what is common for a generic cell. Let's start with a little background. The study of cells goes back to 1600s, when the first rather crude microscopes allowed a study of plant cells. Major leaps on this field have been made since 1800s, as advances in the tools and methodology has allowed great progress. All of this work has led into defining four major concepts, collectively known as cell theory. Let's look at each of these. Firstly, cells are the basic unit of life, both on a structural and functional level. So really, understanding cellular level structures and processes is vital if one wishes to understand life on a larger scale too. Secondly, all of the organism's activities depend on these cells, both at the level of individual cells as well as a result of combined effort of all cells. The third point is very fundamental to all anatomy and physiology, and we will talk about that on a larger scale later in this course. But for now, we will look at it at the cell level. This statement points out that the structure and function are linked and complement each other. I have given one example here about the shape and structure of a cell component dictating what biochemical functions can happen. Finally, cells can only arise from other, already existing cells. And we will be looking at all of these statements in more detail as we work through the material, but I think that this is a good starting point for us. So, what we see here is a view of some of the major structures of a generalized cell. And these structures can be grouped within three major areas. Plasma membrane, which is the flexible outer boundary of the cell wall. It is important that it is selectively permeable, as you will find out later in this course. Then we have cytoplasm. You can think of it as this opaque, jello-like mass of intracellular fluid. This is packed with various organelles, which are small structures that perform specific functions. And finally, we have nucleus. This is a rather distinctive structure and often the one that is easiest to spot when studying cells with a microscope. This is an organelle that controls cellular activities, houses the DNA, and is usually located fairly centrally within the cell. So, we will look at all of these, one at a time. But before we do, I want to mention that body is made from much more than just cells. Although we often think that that is all there is. The material outside the cell, filling the spaces in between them and making up body fluids as well as secretions that exit cells and of course also the extracellular matrix. These are all part of the extracellular material. So, let's look at the plasma membrane in a little more detail. As mentioned earlier, this separates the inside of the cell from the outside. It is important to note that plasma membrane is, in general, a very active structure, having a dynamic role in the cellular activities. And here we have a very nice close-up of the plasma membrane structure. What you can see is this mosaic 
of multiple components and remember that it is also constantly changing and responding to situations controlling what can enter and leave the cell and what cannot. So this dynamic nature of it is sometimes referred as it being fluid. And this is where the term fluid mosaic model comes to describe the plasma membrane. So we can see the two layers of phospholipids here. This is because the hydrophobic character of the tails and hydrophilic character of the heads of phospholipids. So they spontaneously arrange in this format forming a cell wall. And we also have various membrane proteins. These can serve many roles and there are many types of these. And we went through these in the earlier courses. Remember, transport proteins, receptor proteins, proteins that serve as an attachment sites for the cytoskeleton and extracellular matrix, uh, enzymatic proteins, intracellular junction proteins, and cell-cell recognition proteins. I am going to assume that you are clear with the different junction types, uh, passage of materials through the membrane, this includes both passive and active transport as well as tra bulk transport. If you need to review this, your textbook offers much great detail. And now, let's talk about the cytoplasm. This was the cellular material located between the plasma membrane and the nucleus. First of all, you can see in this diagram the yellowish cytosol, which is the jello-like solution made up of water and soluble molecules. We will be focusing on various cell organelles. First, mitochondria. This is often described as the power plant of the cell because this is where the ATP energy molecules of the cell are produced. And you should have looked at the process of cellular respiration earlier too. And there are some internal structures that you might wish to note. In particular, cristae, inner membrane folds, lots of ribosomes, and of course, the circular mitochondrial DNA. So that's it for the mitochondria. Let's look at ribosomes. Remember, these are the sites where the protein synthesis takes place as RNA is read to produce an amino acid chain. We also have a structure called endoplasmic reticulum. This extensive system of interconnected tubes and membranes contain both rough, where ribosomes are attached to, rough ER, and smooth ER without ribosomes. Again, you should be comfortable with its structure and function. Golgi apparatus is the next one that we will tackle. This is formed from stacked, flattened membrane discs, and if you recall my description of it, it's like a distribution center. Materials arrive there, get sorted and repacked, and then leave. Then we have a bunch of vesicles. And, of course, we have our cytoskeleton. This contains different kinds of tubules and filaments, and they provide both structural support as a scaffolding, but also a transportation system, if you wish, the highways of the cell that other structures can tra travel along. And finally, I want to mention the centrosome and centrioles. These are especially important in cell division. Again, I expect that you are familiar with it from your past studies. Now, we are ready to start to look at the nucleus. This is the largest organelle and contains the genetic information for nearly all proteins that the cell can make. It is also in charge of overseeing the cell's activities. Some describe it as the control computer, CEO or design department, and I would say that it probably 
is all of these and more all rolled into one. Most cells are uninucleate. This means that they have only one nucleus. But there are some, like skeletal muscles, bone cells known as osteoclasts, and liver cells, that actually have multiple nuclei within one cell. These are known as multinucleate. And of course, an example of a nucleate type of cell that has no nucleus would be red blood cells. Let's have a look at some of the structures of a nucleus in a little more detail. So here we see a double membrane barrier around the nucleus and it is known as the nuclear envelope. Inside it is a jelly-like fluid nucleoplasm. What you can really notice quite strikingly is that on the outer layer of nuclear envelope is continuous with the rough ER. Notice all of those ribosomes on the surface. And we can also see nuclear pores. Think of it, without these openings the RNA would not be able to leave the membrane and close nucleus. And you can also see the complex proteins lining each pore. It is these that play a major role in the regulation of what enters and exits the nucleus. Here I have actually really nice real-world electron microscope pictures of an actual nucleus surface and you can even see those nuclear pores. Quite amazing, isn't it? Now, here note the nucleolus, this dark staining small dense structure within the nucleus. It appears during cell interface. And finally, you can see some fine unevenly stained network of chromatin here. This is actually a mixture of DNA, histone proteins and RNA. So now we have covered most of what I want you to be reminded of the cells and cell structures and of course their functions. Let's turn on the labels. So there is quite a lot there, but as I said, this should be largely revision for you. One more thing that I want you to be comfortable with is, is the cell cycle. And this is something that you should have covered in your earlier studies. And if not, you have a very detailed description available in your textbook. So be comfortable with that. And that is all there is to what I want you to know about the basic cell biology in order for you to be prepared for this course. 